back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, XCOM 2 is here, and it's quite the cinematic experience. Then Max, Max, Mad Max, I don't know, it's maddening, because we don't know who is porting it. Do aliens have areola? Well, I don't want to believe. And in America... Sony stops the PlayStation 3 from running Linux. In Soviet Russia, PlayStation 3 are run on Linux. Yeah, close enough. Holy cancellations, Batman! Feral just can't catch a break. And we never did hear the Ravens cry. And now we won't hear it. At all. Ever. I'm Vince Stone, here at LGC Actual, switching the bits joined every week by our team, Canadian podcaster, Master Huey. A little bit overworked, and all the way to the to go. Pedro Matias, and together with Shat World Dynamic, joining us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time every week, we form that special bit known as Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started, we like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. I'll start because, you remember about two weeks ago, I genuinely busted my ass, like legitimately. <laughs> And I, I was forced to sit in a normal chair. That sucked. Wasn't good at it. So uh, I bought a new um bowl. It's an extra thick black bowl giggity, calling him Big Jim. And it, it comes with a bit of a warranty, so we'll be testing it out. I'm just going to give you a bit of a pro tip. If you've been two weeks off the bowl, don't just hop right back on one, because I almost noped my ass onto a hardwood floor when I tried that. What's my going on, j Yeah. <laughs> No, I uh, work kicked my ass this week. I had three 13-hour days in a row. Plus, I had to work for another four hours this morning. So that was fun. I picked the wrong week to quit smoking, let me tell you. <laughs> well, I swung by the local PC store on the way home yesterday, and they had a Cooler Master Hyper 103 heatsink for sale for like 15 euros. Yeah, the Steam box is that quiet now. Well, one thing that is never quiet is the horse, J-Man. I think it's really quiet. I think it maybe encountered a bit of a chest burster and now is a Xeno horse. It's our Steam Lurks! <laughs> XCOM 2 is out! We'll give it to you. And it has <laughs> some interesting stuff. They have a article they posted on their page for native steam controller integration i have yet to actually try this out but let me tell you when we're reviewing it next week and we are reviewing it next week i will be playing the entire time on this because it works again <laughs> oh well uh, so yeah, what yeah what you didn't give us that? an update on that I yeah so i apparently changing the batteries yet a third time fixed it so <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, shrug, <laughs> okay. shrug emoticon. They're, they're, they're also doing a Rocket League style promotion where if you buy XCOM 2, you can get a Steam controller for 40% off. So that's that's 25 bucks. That's not pretty bad, considering that this is actually a pretty badass controller that when I touched the areola, now it scrolled the show notes and I don't know where the fuck I am anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, speaking of XCOM 2, it is out. Um, it's been ported by a fine friends at Feral Interactive. What is it? You never heard of it. Are you kidding? It's XCOM 2. Strategy turn based alien. Oh my god, it's a oh, wow, 59.99 wet stinky caches. But you should expect that for a triple A title with a day one release on the Linuxes. Uh, Ooh. you're going to be looking at. We don't uh, get a lot of those. No, no, no. I mean, it's based on the Ubuntu 1404. You pretty much got to be rocking the NVIDIAs in order to get this running, even though, P Man, I've heard some people have managed to get it running with the uh, Radeons, right? Yeah, and if you actually open up the SH file that Steam starts when you hit the play button, you'll notice there's actually a conditional to detect that if you're running FGLRX, it loads a minimal memory allocation library that doesn't let the GPU do work. basically allocate a hell of a lot of memory to it. Otherwise, the game will just crap itself. <laughs> well, and I, I mean, there, there is there is a real difference between supporting the various GPUs and actually having it working. Because, of course, if it runs OpenGL, it should theoretically work. I but guess some know. things that we do need to point out is a lot of people are talking about performance issues. Uh, you can't blame Feral for this because uh, they're not alchemists. Their job is to port over the Windows titles, and the Windows version runs like liquid ass, and not in the good way. Uh, over here, it pretty much noped with the 358 non-beta drivers, it did work with the 360 118s poorly, but I can't use that because those have an issue with handbrake 
which I'm blaming NVIDIA for, um, yeah. I managed to get it to work with, what did I end up with? 355.11, and I kind of had to roll back to that, and that's, I didn't have to go all the way back to the stable branch. But, uh, JBB, it, it has a weird pop-up screen. Yeah, no, it looks like, and th this happened with, um, I, it didn't happen with Alien Isolation. It did happen with Grid Autosport. And it seems yep. that Feral has constructed their own Unity Nope screen for their ports. And but I you mean, can disable it. You you, you yes. can disable it. And really, because there, there's a little tick box that says always show this dialogue. But it kind of, it kind of, if, if you're, if you're going to promote this game to be compatible with Steam Controller, this little pop-up does not play nice in big picture mode because it drops you to desktop and then it'll drop you to full screen after you make your selections. Mm -hmm. um, and really, all this stuff can be configured in game. So what uh, is now? The I will there? give it to Feral. I will give it to Feral. They that pop up if you're running SteamOS proper, it never shows up. It like detects that oh, they're running SteamOS. It's a Steam Big Picture Mode session only. That pop up never shows up. Well, uh, Pedro, I mean, something I want to ask you because you're running TwinView, right? Yes. Right, and Jordan and I are running separate X screens. Uh, it has that little. Select which monitor you want. I couldn't make heads yes. or chainsaw out of that. Could, yeah, because make... you're uh, if you're running separate X sessions, it only detects the monitor that you started it from. It only detects that X session. But if you're running Twin View or if you have like three or four monitors more, it'll actually pick up on each one individually, and you can lock it to each of the screens. That so works pretty well out of the box. In Interestingly enough, I'm not just running separate X screens. I'm simultaneously running Twin View and separate X screens, just yeah. to make things even more complicated. <laughs> and yeah, this this fucking configuration screen has no idea what my monitor can figure. Well, gentlemen, I, I, I got some bad news. They've killed uh, the goddamn it, Batman. Simple? It's no, bad, the Joker will <laughs> be so bad. pissed off, and he's going to yeah. kill all of us. <laughs> so, Elder Pliny, or however you spell that. So, uh, came on the Steam forums for Batman Arkham Knight, and Batman. he said it's no longer coming Batman. to Mac and Linux. Uh, we are very sorry to confirm that Batman Arkham Knight will no longer be coming to Mac and Linux. If you have pre-ordered Batman Arkham Knight for Mac or Linux, please apply for a refund via Steam. So, Jordan, you're not getting money. <laughs> no! That I, I, I don't know. Buy. I mean, you, you got to kind of imagine that um, Farrell was a bit disappointed about this whole deal. I mean, uh, I could imagine it went down... It's like you know the WB. It's like, we're we're not supporting this anymore. Farrell and Farrell's like fuck. Um, the they made one little statement on the Reddit's. Um, uh, it's in chat realm. Frenchy posted it. No, yeah. yeah, we basically what what was it? They just can't comment on it. Yeah, well, yeah. Frenchy Frenchy made some speculation, but really what it says is our contract with Warner Brothers forbids any discussion of this whatsoever. But I mean, I I really think Farrell would be really frustrated because they put about eight months of work into this to try and fix this nightmare fuel only for it to be shit canned. Well, we don't know how far it was from release. I'm curious though. We were, we were talking earlier before we went live. I want to know if they release Arkham Knight right now, will it run better than the initial windows release? Cause if it does, I will chalk that up as a win. <laughs> yeah. The thing is we're never going to see it. And never. a couple of months ago when the developers Rocksteady said that some of the bugs of the windows version were unfixable, I pretty much nailed the coffin shut for me on this game. Yeah. But you, you got to admit that you're sitting back there this entire time going, this would maybe, be such a win if, if they could sort this. Yeah. I mean, you were the chosen oh, 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 yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. And all that business. But, um, I, I want to believe who because, is uh, yeah, they showed up in uh, steamdb.info you can find all this nightmare fuel in our show notes after the fact um it is uh mad max is showing on um, mac and linux uh Ooh. yeah the configuration and all the dlcs yeah. and everything else yeah. yeah i'm definitely looking at that but the big question remains lads who's boarding it question mark i mean seriously this is 2016 and i'm not picking on anyone i'm not picking on feral i'm not picking on aspire i'm not picking on icky butts no one. I'm just, it's 2016 and I'm sick and tired of this. Ooh, guess what game we're porting? Bullshit that just needs to die in a fire. I mean, maybe, uh, all right, uh, what do you think, P-Man? I mean, uh, it, it's probably just contractual stuff, right? Where they're like, you can't tell anyone until it's out and released. Uh, am I being crazy? Uh, it is a little bit of that, but it's also a little bit of that smugness of... I know something that you don't, therefore I'm going to be a mysterious cunt and not tell you 
what I know. Well, I but, mean, yeah. you, you, you got to give federal credit. At least they've made an attempt to gamify it. Yeah, yep, they try. They, they, they have their little radar screen. <laughs> yeah. I, re- yeah, I really one, hope that this this game is actually a proper port, not virtual programming, because yeah. this game is built on the Just Cause 2 engine. I played Just Cause 2. That game is fucking awesome. And the multiplayer mod is fucking awesome. And Just Cause 3 is based on the same engine. So if this was properly ported, we would get all those games for free and it would have been amazing. But it's brought to you by Virtual Program. <laughs> Calling it now. Yeah, this Calling is a, this is another one for the I hope it's not virtual programming bag. Mostly because I kind of liked what I saw in this game of watching people playing on YouTube. I want to play this game on Linux. And it, yes. and you know what? It's a good movie tie-in game. Those are so rare. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I heard a truck simulator is making out with his guy friends. Change gear, oh, change yeah. gear, change gear, murder prostitute, change gear. Okay, this is American Truck Simulator. Yes. So you may remember a couple of years back, SCS Software brought us Euro Truck Simulator 2. And at the time, they sent us some keys, and that was all fine and dandy. I actually enjoyed the game very much. So I poked them with an email, and they haven't replied. Um, what the hell? Uh, a, I'm completely okay with that. Um, <laughs> B, you you have a nasty habit of like hitting them like right on launch date. So two weeks from now, they'll dig through that mountain of the emails, and we'll unfortunately probably have to play this because I actually uh pro- probe the uh developer guy that got noped from steam once thomas duda mm-hmm. <laughs> i poked him long before the game even did, did came you out. ask him duda where's my truck <laughs> basically yeah i sent him an email sent him like a poke on twitter and he said oh yeah i'll get to it uh and i mean <laughs> so the, the, these are this is from the same guys who brought you Eurofuck Simulator, of course. Yeah. But mm. interestingly enough, they're only giving you two states, which means there are forty eight <laughs> DLC to go at least. <laughs> they are going to be rolling in it for these truck simulators. Talk about things. a bonus soda. Um, P man, explain to me because I, I know um our, our good buddy Dick plays it, right? Yes. And he, uh, he, he's I know you have like time vampired with this thing, and I, yeah. I, I've played it for a moment. Uh, it's like I I, I don't really envision myself driving a lorry and being entertained but w- it's w- not about appeal, entertainment man? so much as is it, it is about catharsis yeah it's catharsis it's see what, what, would be, what would be neat for this type of game is if you had like a randomized cb radio type thing where you could talk to other people playing the game at the same time well you don't have randomized cb radio but the game actually picks up if you move from one state to the other, it'll actually go online and pick a radio station from that state and play it on the cab of the truck. It's like immersion Man. level. So the moral Through of the this roof. story, ladies and gentlemen, is stay out of Alabama. But uh, dragons <laughs> are expensive, you know. Oh yeah, this is this is Time of Dragons. This is a non early access game about flying around with dragons, except these ones have lasers. Pew, oh boy. Pew, pew. <laughs> yep. Yeah, this appa- apparently this is a free to play MMO available on Steam. It's available on the Linuxes. Um and it does support according to them most modern 64-bit Linux distributions, which is good for them. No no glibc OS. But yeah, it's it's a MMO where you go around shooting other people as dragons, sort of like um there was that Xbox game where you did that with biplanes. Well, I mean I there was remember. Panzer yeah, Dragon Airfix back in the day. Um, yeah. just to think, I mean, it's completely free to download. Uh, when it initially launched, it was only a Russian comrade. Uh, oh, um, comrade, yes. Yes, comrade. Um, got to throw that in there. Another thing, the screenshots? Lies. They were just full of lies. It looks nothing like that I've eaten. That, that, that is some, um, bedazzle filter on, like, maybe uh, concept art. plastic wrap. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean... I, I, I have yet to play it. Maybe I'll do a follow-up to uh, dagger on the game with this guy just to <laughs> give him the comparison. Except this wouldn't be a busted ass early access show. <laughs> but, you know, pillar, pillars are racist, you know. This is from Rock, Paper, Shotgun. Pillars of Eternity is pushing out a big old pre-patch for their expansion, The Racist March. And it comes with some interesting stuff. Um, they're, they're adding a story mode where they... Be, the, the combat in this game is quite frankly brutal. You will die a lot. So they're they're adding a story mode that makes the combat a little easier, so you can just focus on the story and the RP stuff. Um, there's a long, big ass list of bug fixes and balance improvements and whatnot. So it's good that they're still working on this game, and it's really unfortunate that I've not spent more time with it because I need to like I would need to spend time and learn the system because part of what 
made uh, KOTOR and Baldur's Gate and Planescape and Neverwinter Nights so engaging was I actually knew the rules and it was a rewarding experience to see that knowledge translated into like enhanced game content. With this, it's like uh, I pressed the button. The, did that do something I like? No, nope, save scum. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, Pedro, you liked it. Ben, not so much. Mm. I mean, yeah, uh, I I'll try that. Yeah. It's uh, basically your Baldur's Gates and your Icewind Dales brought into the 21st century properly. I mean, yeah, the enhanced editions help too, but this is a whole new story. So if you already went through the story of your Baldur Gates and your Icewind Dales and you don't want to play it all over again just because it's a new thing, this is what you're looking for. The Pillars of Eternity yeah. is kind of amazing. You yeah, know what else is amazing? An in, in, entirely new system. It's not actually turn-based. It's real-time, Yeah. Which... It's kind of a weird thing for me because I'm used to the Baldur's Gate style of like you can pause after every round. But yeah. stop. Hammer time. Hammer time. time. As in the Ben Hammer. Yep. This this guy. This this, <laughs> this is the kind guy. of asshole I like because he made uh, some fake hacks and he set them on a timer. Like for the first three days or so after he initially released the hack. It would actually function properly. It would do the whole aimbot thing where it automatically aims on Counter-Strike Global Offensive. If you were playing with it, it would actually aim directly at other people's heads. And you basically all you had to do was click the button and they would die. But after three days, VAC would immediately get notified that that was a hack. So everyone was getting their, everyone was using it, was getting their accounts banned. <laughs> Oh yeah, you're you're doing Glob's work, son. That is that is the exact kind of people we need <laughs> fucking with these cheaters. Yeah. So basically, like about thirty five hundred people downloaded the hack and got their Steam accounts vac banned. <laughs> okay, it's, most it, of those it's, were it's burner brilliant. accounts that they use. Yeah, uh, a lot of the screenshots that they show on that Reddit thread, it's people discussing, yeah, I lost two of my burner accounts to that hack. Don't buy it. It's an insta ban. But yeah, in all fairness, it's actually pretty rare to see an actual cheater in Counter-Strike Global Offensive than it used to be in Counter-Strike Source. I did run into one last week while I was doing a competitive match. It took two whole rounds before someone at Valve actually woke up and like, oh, right, that guy's cheating. Yeah, I thought one of the um, interesting things that he did was like he put on like a Dutch angle. <laughs> 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 Just a mess with him. Um, but yeah, that, that, like Jordan said, I mean, he's doing the work of Flying Spaghetti Monster. And that's last leaked Windows hacksaws for us to deal with on the Linux but, but uh, you know, you know if you we like if to you want to be a lead, if you want to be a lead hack store, you can hop on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Oh yeah, the show's and button, son. Uh, oh, that's right. We have that support the shows and button that links you to our Patreon. We got some Amazon affiliate links that you can just give us free money if you're gonna go buy something from Amazon. Click on the link. Doesn't cost. And it doesn't doesn't cost you anything and we do, don't use it because we're idiots yes do a better job than we do we always i forget <laughs> to use it all the damn time but we also have some um paypals maybe you don't like the patreons you, you can yeah. some quid on. yeah I, I mean paypal might suspend your account but that's the risk you take if you're gonna take the uh pepsi challenge with that and of course we have <laughs> our lovely our veritable our venerable patreon campaign and we closed out the month over 135 bucks which means yep. that you get four episodes of linux gamecast weekly daily wednesday and we got a new supporter, too, Mr. David S., who has a name suspiciously similar to my boss. And when I found out it wasn't him, that was more dodged. <laughs> Let me tell you. But um, currently we are sitting at, what well, we at 66, so that's 129. That's not yeah. bad for the culling at the end of the month, you know, which always happens. Yeah. Um, yep. But we will be doing four beta episodes of Linux Gamecast Weekly Daily Wednesday. It'll be me and Pedro and standard ass hattery we'll try to get some people in we do have a new patreon goal and that is serious sam 3 brad edition at 200 per because jordan genuinely hates the game and we're, we're going to uh force him to play multiplayer and do a complete run through with us it's going to be mm -hmm. kind of hot <laughs> yeah it, it, it's it's going to be great too because once we finish i'm totally making ven play through the entirety of sword coast legends with me it's going to be brilliant he's going to want to kill himself <laughs> and i won't let him he'll you beg us to kill him and i will say no. Let's see here as I scroll up frantically looking to where I put 
the little things because we got a couple things we need to talk about just um, to make this extra long with the Patreons um, because now they have an exit survey. So mm. when people are like, oh, yeah, you know, you know, financial situations change completely understandable. One that really got me, somebody mentioned, and it was like, hey, man, I'm going to give you 50 pence a show. And it turns out his bullshit evil ass bank was charging him a pound for every transaction. So, yeah, that that that's what that's one of the things you gotta work. That that hurt my brain organ. Uh, pro tip: LGCKOs never link directly to your banking account. Don't do that ever. It doesn't matter if it's Patreon. It doesn't matter if it's PayPal. Just don't do that. Bad idea. Bad you get, times. You 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 can you can get a prepaid credit card too. Yeah, and, that'll, and it's another thing yeah. you also need to think about is remember, you only get charged at the end of the month. So you know if you you're putting in you know five pence a show that's going to be 20 at the end of the month one time charge keep that in mind all mm -hmm. right so what's coming up next j man coming up next amd has some special new sauce with their apus that no one's gonna buy and we get to be in soviet russia like i mentioned in the rundown and screwed that up go me If you're not watching us live, you really should be. You just missed out on an entire conversation about moose. But speaking of moose, here's the news. Yes. We don't start with drivers Smooth. this week. Moose. <laughs> and, and, and no moose knuckle joke either. Come on, man. You're, you're slipping. All right. Let's, <laughs> let's kick this off. AMD has a new... Well, you know about the Wraith coolers. Their supernatural cooling brick. That's just a quieter version of their... This thing, the stock cooler that yeah. I'm waving in front of the camera. This guy, yeah. It's quieter. Instead of going, it goes. Anyways, to go along with this, they're releasing a new APU. This is the A1070 shit. I just forgot. I just completely brain farted on the thing. The 7860K, which uh, has an upgraded CPU. They're still using the same R7 GPU, but they've lowered the TDP and increased the clock speed. So for CPU bound stuff, you're going to get some better performance. And if you're building a budget or power conscious system, you're going to want to get what they're calling the Godavari system. It's sacrilegious. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, definitely looking at this, um, P-Man, I know you got some things to say, especially with that um, mysterious uh, jackalope that never appeared. But mm -hmm. do you also feel at this point they're just kind of putting like racing fins and stripes on old things going, look, it's more aerodynamic. Oh, are you saying that AMD just quote unquote releases a new product uh, that is totally not a rebrand? Trust me, you guys, it's totally not because that's exactly what they did with the R9 280 and the R9 or yeah, the R9 370, which were just rebrands of previous graphics chips no no okay uh yeah back to the story the one thing i'm wondering is where the hell is that exacore apu they promised us a couple of years back oh what the, the uh, what the one in the playstation 4 slash xbox slash that thing that was supposed to be released <laughs> no that's a, that's an eight core that's an eight core jaguar apu no no they actually promised us a it was a cabini i think six core apu which came with the same r7 280 or whatever it is but it never showed up so currently if you're actually going for the budget build the only thing you can get to in order to get that price performance ratio is the athlon x4 860k because they also promised the 870k and the 880k no idea where the hell those are well they so, do, so here is here, here's the thing, though, if because this is Linux game cast we're talking about, not just general purpose <laughs> computing, but gaming specifically. Mm. And tr trust me, Pedro has done the integrated Radeon. I have done the integrated Radeon. Just get a if unless you're use if you're not going to use this for just doing regular work or programming or something, get a dedicated GPU. You will get a 750 Ti. Six. Literally, yeah. If you, you're going you, for you the will budget, save get so a much headaches. Ti. That seven that low for, for profile 750 Ti I shoved in my Steam box made everything so much better. Oh my god. It's yeah, and AMD is stuck in 2005, and that's annoying. But plus that got, said, I mean, we, I mean, come on, I mean, uh, we, we we got hopes. Uh, maybe you know the um, new sauce is going to be all right. We hope. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah if, 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 if they ever release it, come on. Time. <laughs> all right it's, well it's let's get epic all right yeah this is actually really cool this is from engadget links to all this nonsense 
in our show notes, Unreal is attempting to make a VR content creation tools. Jordan so doesn't. Slap it, I mean, this doesn't make sense. He's not riding a bike. I know it's it's a bit <laughs> disturbing to look at. Um, but yeah, no, they they they're trying to create tools that you can use with your HTC Vive de France or your um, Oculus to actually construct 3D environments and 3D models using VR tech, which is actually kind of cool because it, it's a lot. One, one of the big barriers you're, to you're missing the Blender. point here brad you're building shit with lightsabers <laughs> what yes fair point fair point they're like massive reverse lightsabers that build stuff instead of destroy stuff <laughs> but i mean one, one of the big barriers to entries if you're working with 3ds max or blender or something like that is sort of wrapping your brain around how you how you sculpt using these tools with this you're using your hands you sculpt it as you would clay or some other sort of putty material so that's cool but we all know the first thing that people are going to do once they get their hands on this technology dicks just dicks everywhere no no, dicks no that is totally no 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 the first thing that popped in my mind that i thought about doing yes it was yep. um, being... yes it was but... <laughs> <laughs> so can you actually sculpt the body of a i don't know a virtual sex buddy because i don't know i'm trying to see this you know because the one thing VR is going to do really well are sexy games. So how do you... Listen, you can make an entire sex buddy out of dicks. You fail to see the potential here. <laughs> All right. Mo moving, moving on. on. <laughs> moving on. So, we've done, we've drawn this into the ground. Yeah, the long live and short long of this? Long. All right, go ahead. As you yeah, work. yeah, yeah. So the t Crow team released a teeny tiny blog post that they... Supposedly asked Dean Sekulik, Crow Team senior programmer, uh, what the hell is he talking about about this Vulcan thing? Because everyone was going off on that Steam forum post that they made last week, which we covered. You can watch that episode after you're done with this one. Uh, uh, and he said, yeah, it's totally in there. It took only five minutes. And then he took a screenshot and that's the result. But yeah, like we said last week, what they're actually going to do in all seriousness is that once Vulcan it's out and it's publicly available uh, the Talos principle will support it Sirius M3 will also support it at some time in the future and Sirius M4 will of course have it out of the yeah, box yeah I mean it's definitely so. going to be a neat thing I was talking with uh, Scott here in chat realm over here um, from PC so Pura, and he posted some link to like the Vulcan guide book and I was like who the fuck needs standards and these guys Crow team just being metal as fuck as they are. Like, yeah, yeah. No, no, we're working on it. Plus, they, um, like, at replied us with just, hi. <laughs> it was kind of just them being metal. Um, You might remember, you know, several months back, same guy. He was like, hey, uh, I'm trying to do some uh, actual acceleration using oh, the VDPAU. VDPAU thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I was the guinea pig. And I was like, okay, uh, Brad, um, it doesn't work. Which was immediately met by, shit, you tried it? Neat. Um, all right. Well, I'm glad to know it doesn't work, but we tried it. Good. So that was a thing. But uh, we have yeah. not. Uh, actually, I, th I think we finally heard the last uh, cry of the raven. Oh, yes, this is a complete 180. Uh, yeah, Topware Interactive is um, gone. It's dead, Jim. Uh, they filed for bankruptcy a couple of days ago, or at the beginning of the week. Honestly, I cannot remember. And the uh, Google translation for this article was not ideal either. So, <laughs> yeah, the um, Topware, as a publisher, has officially filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. So they're uh, gone. To the surprise of no one, really. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and with we, them we, we, went the, we, we uh, had some interesting the curse of Raven's Cry. Yeah. yeah, Vendetta, the curse of Raven's Cry is also now gone from the Steam store, and I'm secretly hoping—well, not so secretly—but um, <sighs> that they sell off their IPs because I would like to see a modern-day sequel to Enclave on Linux. I mean, uh, I'll be perfectly you know, honest with you. I, in full disclosure, I don't even know why it's a thing anymore. They send us keys for <laughs> Raven's Cry. <laughs> <laughs> among other things. Uh, yes, among other things. Among other things. But um, I, I would like to actually see that game fixed into a playable state because, I mean, it is a Skyrim 
scale yes, game. Pirates. And mm. I mean, it could be very fun. But, you know, definitely noping that. One thing I noticed was, yeah, I mean, if you, their uh, discussion forums and Steam is still open. And it was constantly active. People were like, this game's great. This good. Defending it. Silence. Flatlined right now. I mean, everyone who was being paid to shill this. I mean, it was like somebody that got their MBA from um, University of Phoenix Online was told. And was like, make this game get publicity. And it's like, here, we'll just hire people to get positive reviews. And that'll solve things. And it never did. Not even after deleting the original game. Wiping all those reviews, doing the new thing, they still couldn't hold it off. So, um, J Man, am I right when I'm saying just good mothering riddance? I, I mean, yeah. I mean, it would it would be nice to see. I, I, the, we had some interesting palaver with them via email that I don't think we can necessarily get no. into. But I would like to see uh, if they do sell off their assets. Their um, assets. I would like to see Aspar take a crack at Two Worlds too, because that game seemed kind of interesting. But of course. This being from GameStar DE, the next step is to annex the Sudetenlands. Well, um, let's just talk about Blackjacks and Hookers. Um, <laughs> Ant Simulator canceled after crowdfunding money spent on liquor and strippers. Um, this seemed like a big thing. It's been updated a couple times. Um, we'll give you the um, short and long of this. Um, basically, this guy got together with um, two of his friends that he'd apparently known for about 11 years. They're working on Ant Simulator. I don't know if it's still currently available for download. It was a Unity game available for Windows, Mac, and uh, Linux, not PC. God, I hate when people just say that. But um, initially, when I was thinking, I was like, okay. His partner said, you know, we've blown all the money on company meetings, which is, you know, hookers and blow. And that's the thing. And he's just like, well, we, he's the only developer on the game. Bad idea. You get hit by a bus. No more game. Raptor bus proof. Right. And, uh, well, and what am I trying to say? This is what I'm trying to say. They said if he continues development on this game, the legalese contract they have him signed into, that they can sue him out of existence. And I was initially thinking, you know, I was like, well, A, that's breach of good faith and breach of fiduciary uh, duty. And not that I've helped two <laughs> lawyers go through law school later. <laughs> but, um, after reading his YouTube comments, it seems like he's like, hey, man, I'm not even going to worry about that. But further research proved that this Kickstarter, Jordan, was only for 4,400 wet, stinky caches. And I've so been and then I've been at corporate dinners with bigger checks than that. I, I mean, seriously, that's a few, a few hundred cheap beers and maybe three high class strippers. But that, that, was, that was an interesting thing. These guys were actually spending money raised for game development on strippers and booze. And while while the contract, at least what he says from the outset, um, says um, that he was kind of screwed. All these guys were listed as contractors that were allowed to spend money and not actually have to work. I would get a lawyer to look over that contract just in case. He says he also that he doesn't want to name names. I would go fucking full scorched earth on these guys because if they're going to pull this shit, they should not be doing business with anyone ever, period. I mean, but so here's the interesting thing about this this scenario is we often joke about... Um, Kickstarter campaigns, the people taking the money, going and spending that on blackjack and hookers. And this is a case where they actually did just that. It's kind of surreal. Uh, are, is it surreal? The only thing surreal here is that it took this long for it to happen. True I enough. don't know. I mean, what, what I don't get is everyone being up in arms about this small little bit of change and horrible, horrible. I mean, if it's completely legit, it's a shitty situation. Man. Learning lesson. And meanwhile, Chris Roberts is frittering away millions of our dollars. But who cares about yeah. that? Like, we should be more humble. Oh, no. We shouldn't because we're Aww. getting shut down. Damn it. Yeah, this is uh, cheesetalks.humble.net. Um, they used to host graphs, uh, pulling data from the various humble bundles Look so that you have some nice visualizations there. about the breakdowns of who's spending what on what bundles. These guys are getting shut down. Um, they've loaded all their code onto github this they will keep this up as long as they can as a um just as a historical artifact but they're not going to be updating it anymore one thing that kind of pisses me off though there is no indie bundle statistics at front and center so it shows yeah. a lot of uh, linux is not paying that much but if you actually go into the data below you can see there are a lot well more even linux one thing purchases. i will argue that with you j baby is you know back when humble was humble and it was like open source and you know we'd open source some games but 
Oh, his cross to platform. Now they've just turned platform. into another soulless, faceless. Like, Listen. Yeah. Hey, ben, man. I mean, ben, there's a lot of it, Windows game is like not redeemable from Mac or uh, the Linux, and I'm sure that affected sales on top of everything else too, right? Listen, dude. If you pay me ten dollars a month, oh, I will huh. give you a key for games you already own. Brilliant. Every month. <laughs> yeah. The one thing that's interesting, and since this is going to be archived, you could, you will be probably be able to check it at some point in the future, is that if you actually scroll down and you pick all of the humble indie bundles out of that list, they're the ones in red. You pick all of those and then you have a look at the sum of the Macs and the Linuxes and the Windows. Linux has paid considerably more with just the humble indie bundles than Mac. I mean, considerably. It's like one and a half times more. And we still don't have Darkest Dungeon for Linux. Yeah. Or Sunless Sea. But up, ne but up <laughs> next. It's time to get cut. That's a slice. Um, Gunmetal Arcadia. Endevel build a vertical slice. Doing hipster pixel right, dare I say. Yes, I dare say. Available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Again, not just PC. That's a brilliant thing. What is it? You never heard of it. It genuinely is like a SNES Zelda... Run around, they jump even around. Have the CRT emulation yeah, going. That, that's actually one thing I enjoyed. Um, on top of just being a zip file, Home Cheese maintained permissions correctly on Linux inside Ooh. of a zip file. And this is yep. actually running the Nerd for Mac and Linux engine, and it works perfectly well. Performance was fine. Really enjoyed the um, CRT overlay on my 28 inch 4K monitor and sit back on um, the couch way back here. Play it with the controller, and I was like, all right, this is a bit of all right. I mean, it, it has the visual aesthetics, the gameplay aesthetics. It's really small. Hey, it just felt right, and it's priced to sell in this uh, development build as in free. You can check that Nightmare Fuel out at gunmetalarcadia.com, and that's a thing. But, uh, Jordan, uh, there's some more graphically intensive games we can play now, right? Yeah, before we move on, I just want to correct you on one thing. It's pronounced no. <laughs> but anyways, um, this is our RPC S3, the PlayStation 3 emulator. It's open source. You can grab it on GitHub. This is a video of them playing after burner, burner climax giggity in on under. Uh, the, well, this is under Windows. That's the thing. So he's all, he also makes mention that this is running DirectX 12 as its uh, GPU language. But I mean, that's still pretty impressive because. The PlayStation 3 was a little bit of moon hardware. So the fact that we have this up and running yeah, so, and, and so what, what seems like a fairly reasonable frame rate, too, mm. is, uh, is pretty the thing good. you gotta look at. I mean, if you look at just that video from a month prior, I mean, it was nightmare fuel. And <laughs> yeah. a lot yeah. of people are like, well, this is, uh, that's, you can just download it from st progress. And look at this. I mean, it's GitHub, so you can get in there with the RPCS 3 and help out. I mean, it is fully available yeah. for all the things. I mean, Mac OS, Linux, WinOS, and, well, I, I guess we should say Windows 10 because that's going to be a recommended um, update anytime <laughs> soon. Right? Oh, you're going to be uh, running but it. So, so, um, so one, one of the, well, like I was saying, though, um, th this is good performance under DirectX 12. Um, I'm pretty sure that the OpenGL uh, code path is not going to be as performance and we're still not 100% sure if this guy's going to switch over to Vulkan because that would be the smart bet because then you only have to maintain one code path as opposed to three for metal and DirectX 12 and OpenGL but it, that means that I'm not going to be able to play Guns of Patriots anytime soon under Linux. So. Yeah, I'm going to actually need to see some GTA 5 and some The Last of Us running on this PS3 emulator on Linux to, uh, you know, Actually, start paying attention. Just saying. <laughs> but coming up next, it's aliens. They're invading us. They're building the pyramids. Or they're yeah, starring in games from Feral. Either way, we're throwing chairs at them. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Much like aliens, the chairs do come from space. And they don't like people coming in on their turf. And they have deigned us to destroy the alien menace and so we're throwing chairs at XCOM enemy unknown this game came out like last year for uh for Linux ported by our friends at feral 
They're originally developed by Firaxis Games. It's on the Unreal Engine 3. And we're finally getting around to reviewing it because it would make no sense to review XCOM 2 next week without reviewing this one. So what is it? Enemy Unknown places you in the control of a secret paramilitary organization called... No, I'm not going to make that joke, I NSA. As the XCOM commander, you will defend against a terrifying global alien invasion by managing resources, advancing technology, and overseeing combat strategies and individual Unix, ta Unix tactics. Yes. <laughs> and, of course, full disclosure, Feral gave us keys a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, 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 far away. So let's kick off the chair acquisition. One chair means that it's garbage. Two chairs means that's meh. Three chairs means that's pretty good. And four chairs means that it's come from the stars to take us home. We also have our categories of doom mixed with the working shiny sounds controls and boom. So let's <laughs> kick this off. Then, does it work? Over here, Brother Swing. On the Kumbuntu 1404 LTS. 8150, 980 powered 4K display box of the business. How does it run? Well, it runs pretty damn well, Brad. I'll tell you that. I really have only played this at 1080, so I can't tell you that it runs at a, you know, UHD 2160. But at 1080, with everything on Yellow Swag plus a Dorito, it holds a steady 60 for plus minus 10, depending on the action sequences that are going on. No other issues, no spike crashes, um, nothing to report negative on. So we'll give it four chairs out of the box organ. Mm. On the i7 6700K Fedora 22 64-bit powered NVIDIA 980 box of... Ugh, God damn it, stay down! <laughs> <It's goddamn laughs> I had the special, leave me alone! Um, yeah, no, it, it ran really well at 4K. I was running it in, it ran great at uh, 1080p back on the, when I was using the 670 in the AMD uh, 1090T, and it holds uh, above 50 FPS at 4K. So that's pretty freaking awesome. I'm gonna give that four cheers. Yeah, I actually played this game top to bottom on the calculator. Yes. Uh, the, the game, the Linux port anyway, came out for a Linux on 2014, yeah. And at the time, it was just around the time that I moved in with Nori. So I was still using the calculator and that had a, well, it still has uh, an Intel i3 370M at 2.4 gigahertz and an ATI 5650 HD with one gigabyte of dedicated GDDR3 VRAM. Yeah, it was amazing. I played it top to bottom with the open source drivers on that thing. And I, it, it's awesome. Four chairs. <laughs> All right, that's four chairs to mix with working. Up next is the Shiny and the Sounds. Ben, did it shine or sound? Short and sweet, brother Swag. Um, for a game that was released in 2012, it holds up well enough. I mean, seriously, the character models are not only well done, they're also hella customizable. And you think to yourself, that's an important feature that will save you time from cycling through your squad looking for that one fucker with the arc zappy thingy that you'll you'll learn about if you want to play this. And the transition from the Fox isometric 3D to third-person shooter looks neat, and it genuinely gives you a good look at the surprisingly detailed environments. But all that said, those environments, they, they kind of vary from dark cities, good movie, by the way, to dark deserts, that's racist, and all the way to the ever-elusive dark interior of Building X. The voice acting, brilliant, top-notch. I mean, that's how you can really sell it to me, because I bought everyone, and I was pissed off at someone. I was like, shut up, leave me alone! But I was saying it as genuinely buying these as real people in the game that I was playing. When it comes to background music, the only thing that is memorable is, uh, I guess the best way to say it, right, uh, the baddies are around track. And if you've ever played any game ever, you know, when the baddies are around, it's like, dun, 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 dun. It's like oh, I guess baddies are around, you know, because, you know, clowns show up, which didn't happen in this game. <laughs> It looks like a piece of neat kit. Well done. Well done. Three chairs. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a triple A game. So, of course, you're going to get the standard gorgeous triple A graphics and cinematics. Yeah, and it, it is really cool. Like when you issue your command and your guys, your guy goes into like getting shit done mode and it cuts to like the over the shoulder camera and you see him like rappel down a wall and crash through a train or something like that. It's always pretty cool. Um, and, you know, like Ben said, the voice acting is done by actual actors. What? No, it's impossible. 
Um, I mean, I, I the, the the models are fantastic. The environments, although very limited, like again, Vince said, they're they're fairly well done. And one a little thing that bugged me is I like unique alien designs, and these are all kind of run of the mill. Your grays, your thin men, your weird alien Sengeli ripoffs from Halo, but that's kind of the point. So I can't really fault it for that. Um, it's not going to blow your mind, but it is exceptionally well done. So that's a good three chairs. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, uh, Ben and Jordan already said that everything looks great, and it does. But the characters all look like they fell face first into the uncanny valley. Uh, they do seem to be trying to climb back out from it, but didn't get very far up when you know the game actually came out. Uh, they all look like they're related too. If you look at the face models, they they all look alike. Thankfully, you're not That's really racist. worried about that when you're quite literally being munched on by chrysalids. Uh, the sounds were definitely all right. The, by the end, I actually had to mute all of the voices because after 37 hours of game time, I was getting kind of tired of listening to Dr. Balin shouting at me for using explosive weapons. You're doing that's, it wrong. That's quite enough of that. But yeah, the background music is very subtle, like Ven's already hinted at. Uh, you only really notice it when you're slowly creeping up the map <laughs> to see if you can... You know, stay in cover when you trigger one of the enemy groups, packs, whatever you want to call them. But I'll get into that in the fun. So for Shiny and Sounds, it gets th three chairs. Ah, yeah. English. That's three chairs for Shiny and Signs. So we're going to move on to Control now, then. One thing I definitely uh -huh. want to hit on, I'm um, kind of missed in the mix with the working. This is an Unreal Engine 3 game, notoriously known to not run very well on the Linuxes. Feral did a magnificent job on this. Come on, you, you, you got to come a little bit for that. That said, with the controls, this absolutely did not work with my racing wheel. Sorely <coughs> disappointed about that, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to let that one slide because I definitely need to pick a nit here. I don't like the four-step camera rotation. I, I'm a huge fan of free camera rotation, and... Maybe it's just me, but the camera rotation seems backwards as opposed to what I've been programmed with, with 20 plus years of playing, you know, what is it, uh, Q and E to rotate him. And it's like, okay, and, you know, I'm doing that game with myself, and but it doesn't matter. I mean, it's, it's just quadrant based. It's like one, two, three, four. You can always get back around. But the real issue I have with the controls is the fucking murder to death fight that the map will have with your keyboard and your gerbil when you're trying to throw a grenade, a frag grenade, or a shredder rocket or anything like that. If you're anywhere near the edge, you start flipping. It's like, obey me! And you'll go through that more than once. But, I mean, it's manageable. It's just a bit frustrating to lay that down with the precision. So I kind of think of a chair for that, but pretty damn solid three chairs, son. Yeah, I mean, the camera thing can get a little bit annoying, uh, especially when you're switching elevation with the scroll wheel. But, I mean, that that's, doesn't really detract from the game too much. It doesn't bother me personally. Everything else is sanely done. Yeah, click on things. All the key bindings are what you'd expect for a turn-based strategy game. Well done. Four chairs. Mm -hmm. Yep. You click on things and things react as though they were clicked on. You can also use the board of keys to facilitate some of the clicking. And one of the things that actually surprised me was that it picked up on the NVIDIA Shield controller and on the Logitech uh, F310 that's plugged into the Steam box right now. Yeah, you can actually play this on your Steam machine or your custom Steam box, whatever. Four chairs. Actually, a uh, funny story about that. I had the... Um... I had the Steam controller upside down and the analog stick was depressed in one direction. And for the longest time, I couldn't figure out, why the fuck is the map breaking? Oh, that's plugged in. <laughs> Anyways, that's uh, three chairs for controls. And we got our final subjective category, fun. Did you enjoy being an alien smasher, Ven? It was brilliant. Um, after the first hour, I already felt like a commander. Surrounded by a bunch of needy bitches. Seriously. You spend the majority of the first hour watching cinematics and playing the occasional on-rails tutorial, during which you learn the turn-based bits and dive into the world of construction, research, and resource management. On top of this, you also need to keep an eye on each country's bitchometer. 
because they will nope when they're panicked, and that will cost you some shackles, which makes no sense why they would even think about noping from the one project, but Pedro will get into that a little bit better. All right, let's talk about turn-based strategy, because boy, do I love me some turn-based strategy, and I'm also a huge fan of the movie <laughs> Spice World, Organized Religion and Stake. Well, if X is in fact going to give it to me, the maximum amount I would request would be two. Apparently, two X is as much turn-based strategy as I can handle. Combat, it's basically straightforward with an emphasis on duck and cover, a.k.a. the blue shield of hope and lies, because it will <laughs> never really save you. Now, you do have your standard classes. You know, think about that. Uh, you get your snipers, your heavies, infantry, and all that. And you get some things like Overwatch, which uh, I didn't learn about till earlier this week because they typed it. And I was like, oh, that's what Overwatch does. Neat. And you also have Suppression. It kind of mixes the game up just a bit. But at the end of the day, take that shot. I did rather like it. Hell, six hours in, and I'm about to unlock fuck mothering robots. Yes, I'm going to go back just to do that. And speaking of that, it did bring out my inner sociopath by allowing me to build up a team care for them, and use them like the meat shields they were. The only thing I'm going to ding it a chair on is for the amount of time spent waiting for the alien AI. It's redonkulous. She's like, uh, what's going on? Pause, pause. Oh, then they start moving and it's half the time off screen and all that. And sometimes when you get back to the base, that can get jacked up. I had to revert to a save game because it just flew off into Netherland that I couldn't get back to the actual screen because I was a being just a little bit too fast for it. And uh, I guess if I have to put a bow on this, P.S., how the hell do you keep missing? 99% chance. Shots, fuck you, and fuck the world, but three chairs, well-deserved. Funnily enough, I've actually been in a D&D game where there were, out of a, like a 100% chance, there was like a 1% chance someone would pull it off, and they did. So it, that shit does happen, but not as reliably as what happens in XCOM. But it's a good old tactical turn-based squad shooter. It's um, one of, one of the, uh, the easiest game to compare this to would be Massive Chalice, a game we've already reviewed before. One of the nice things about this game compared to Massive Chalice is that your guys don't grow old and die. <laughs> making all that time you invested in them completely fucking moot. But um, yeah, keeping them alive is a bit difficult because you got to keep them covered or else they will just outright get killed. And you do get attached to them. I, I equipped all my little dudes with hats who have ranks now. And every time they die, I get sad. There's one less hat on the team. And I, I mean, it it is what it is on the tin. A turn-based tactical shooter. And that just steals hours away from your life. I was playing this before we got on the call to record this show. And I'm like, God damn it, Ben, shut the fuck up. I'm trying to finish this mission. Mm. Fine. Yeah, hours hours will melt away playing this. And that is a good thing. Uh, don't don't start playing it unless you have a couple hours to spare. The I mean, there's, there's a little fucking around with the tech trees. And there's lots of potential to make the wrong decision that will screw you over in the long run. But that's part of the fun, and you can always save scum, and you should save scum constantly. Always, 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 always. Three chairs. Yeah, this is the one game that made me actually want to save scum. I managed to get all the way through it without having to resort to that, but it makes you want to. Uh, I like this game. I like it a lot. Uh, it's It's really hard to keep countries from leaving the XCOM project. And it makes no damn sense either as to why they'd actually want to leave the XCOM project if they're getting, you know, panicked. Why are you pulling support from the one chance you have against technologically superior aliens? Yeah. Uh, if you're... That's just a minor nitpick with the uh, mechanics of the game. But if you're just picking up on it, I highly recommend that you play Enemy Within. Uh, they've introduced a whole bunch of new stuff with uh, with that particular bit of DLC, uh, which includes genetic modifications. You can modify one of your ranked soldiers to have like better aim, more willpower. Uh, uh, at some point in the game, you even unlock psionics, but that's already in the original game. Uh, with Enemy Within, that was actually expanded. There's a hell of a lot more to it. Uh, 
let's see, where am I in the notes? Ah, right there. Uh, besides the genetic modifications, you also have the cyborg modifications. You can actually lay one of your soldiers down on the chopping table and cut their limbs off and replace them with robot arms and legs. And then they get this mech warrior type suit and they go around just basically munching everything down with a big ass minigun or a flamethrower, if you're into that. Um, the one thing that they lose is the ability to go into cover, but with the stupid amount of HP that they get from wearing that mech suit, it's not really an issue. Now, I do have one gripe with the actual gameplay, which is for a tactical turn-based action game, stealth is not a thing. At least not in the first one. They kind of fixed that with XCOM 2. But this one, the moment you move into view of a group of aliens, they will immediately run into cover. And you're at that point, you're basically on the defensive. They That was either one of your, the very first turn that you took with one of your squad members, you trigger <laughs> that alien group, or you're basically fucked. Uh, thankfully, they did fix that on XCOM 2, but we'll get to that next week. Uh, the biggest complaint in general is that Feral never went, they never went back and added cross platform multiplayer. So you can only play with other folks on Linux, which at this point, there's not a whole lot of them. So I can only give it three chairs. And that's three chairs for fun. If we tally all that up, it's three chairs for the final score. Canada left my XCOM project, but I think they'll be fine because they just sent Sandy to go fight the aliens. It should <laughs> turn out to be somewhat entertaining. Uh, gentlemen, final thoughts. Uh, final thoughts. Uh, I was debating on whether to tell the story. Um, this is what genuinely got me in this game because we, if you've been watching the show for, uh, I loathe turn-based strategies. It's like, it does not work like that. I know, like real time. You strategy. mean that was sarcasm that you were doing earlier? I know, right? Um, <laughs> hashtag fuck off. Um, <laughs> it's like the real thing, man. What am I... You know, I effectively got squad wiped. I was invading, you know, a crash saucer. And the one person I had left uh, was a um, British lass. Uh, I've never been patriotic and all that. Down to one and aliens all around me. I managed to know all, I think I had to go three of those. And what are the ones made out of total energy? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just call them energy goose. Yeah, and... She pulled it off, man, and I was like, for queen and country, motherfuckers, uh, and I'm doing all that. And if you, uh, she now has an honor, uh, the only one I've ever named, being the sociopath that I am kind of am, is uh, if you're a fan of um, Helsing Ultimate Abridge, her name is officially now Big Titty Police Girl. So, Pedro. <laughs> Well, that's the that's the big thing about the XCOM games. It's the war stories. It's like that one mission that you nearly got squad wiped and that one last guy or girl managed to pull it off. That's amazing. That's what sells this yeah, game. That's what like, keeps you, this you game relevant. You kick their ass. Yeah. yeah. It's the war stories that keep making this game relevant. E even the first one, now there's XCOM 2, yes, but again, we'll get to that next week. It's the one thing that keeps it running. That and multiplayer. Feral, we need cross-platform multiplayer. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Which is like, available like in XCOM 2. Yeah, yeah is, it is. <laughs> which we're getting to next week, as Pedro said, over and over and over and over and over again. No, like, like but like Pedro said, the, the war stories are really uh, one of the more engaging parts of this game. Because, you, like I said, you actually get attached to your it, little dude. It keeps you from squirreling, man. I mean, you're like, oh, it shit, does. there's a thing going it on does. here that I'm it part is. of. This is, this is a fucking time sink. I love it. Buy this game if you don't already have it. Give Feral money so that they can keep making yeah. XCOMs. End of story. Up next, zombie Nazis are hiding under the snow. You got to edit configuration files to deal with them. And what is the best gaming laptop for Linux? It doesn't exist. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I almost coughed as I started to speak. But that's not what we're here for. We're here for some hate mail. And uh, you know how to get in touch with us at this point. Who doesn't? It's just LinuxGameCast.com, contact button, fill the form. If you want to promote your game, send us something we can play around with. Otherwise, we'll just make fun of you. So... What do we have up this week? Uh, oh, we got, we got some dots. Apparently, this is from, 
This uh, is from a guest because I don't think we. Well, no, uh, the... the name is uh, Tib. Uh, <laughs> oh, it, it, so the 4K monitor decided to write us a letter. That's kind of neat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, he says uh, we, we were talking about that snow game. It was the first CryEngine game that got released on Linux and all the other platforms. And they say you can change the resolution of snow in the configuration file. Performance is pretty good on NVIDIA. And it's yeah, so I mean, right the main on. reason we were talking about that, because we were definitely talking about that last week, and by default, the only available resolution, as uh, JBaby learned, was 720p. 720p. And that looks kind of like a bit of ass on 28 inches of 4K displayed. Here's my thing, though. I didn't even bother with that, because I was like, if I want to harden up my box... <laughs> I'll start writing something, and I'll harden up my box. I don't need this game to do it for me. P-Man, do you, you got any thoughts on that? Uh, I never really got around to fixing with snow. snow. Uh, I don't remember. It was that snowboarding it. It was free to play, uh, uh, skiing, yeah. skiing free skiing. to play game on the CryEngine. It w- it is technically the first CryEngine game to show up on Linux. Yes, That's that is. Um, yeah. <laughs> that is kind of awesome, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to bother with it i'm next (laughs) this comes from todd m and he writes hey guys i didn't want to pony up the cash for a high-end laptop with a decent gpu because i'm just going to read this because my brain will nope on the grammar i ended up (coughs) with a decent dell inspiron 17.3 dual core i7 who knows 120 Gigo Joule SSD installed for Door 21, can log in, GNOME, Cinnamon, Cody, Desktop, fuck the world. I really enjoy the Steam on Linux, but I'm limited Intel HD 4400 graphics. So, I'm looking at an, using an external GPU via the one USB 3 port. Have you guys done any review of these? Question mark, by the way, found your reviews on OSMC. Thanks for all the cool reviews. I'm still sorting through... Them all, lots of catching up to do, question mark. Um, so, mm, first question is, JBB, A, I know you're looking for a new Lappy. B, do they make external GPUs for the UBS 3s? They, they, they do, in fact, do, they do in fact uh, make external GPUs based on USB 3.0. Um, under Linux, though, they are a bit of a crapshoot. Um, there's this one particular brand i cannot remember what the what it is for the life of me but they use them in dell docking stations that you had to do some fuckery to get that working under linux um on, on, like honestly it's and like like i said it's a it's a crapshoot you're not going to be able to game on them period i mean you're you're better yeah. off just using the intel igp because that at least has a proper mesa driver working and you get actual open gl it's great if you need like a couple extra external monitors being thrown out on your laptop just for doing some work, but for any gaming, stay the fuck away from it. No, just yeah. bad. No, no. You USB see, Pedro's free. about to explain why we should have kept the uh, PC my CA. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, USB 3.0 can push like five gigabits per second. That's six hundred and something megabytes per second. Uh, the usual typical PCI Express X16 can push 16 gigabytes per second. Quit showing off. (laughs) So, uh, (laughs) there's, yeah, you're better off just running your games on that, uh, Intel 4400. Four lanes at (laughs) 1.62 gigabits per second for 60 hertz at 4K. Yeah. It's, uh, you're not going to be able to play any game with any decent amount of hardware acceleration from an external video card. If you're trying to push a 4K monitor through it, yes, that makes sense. But gaming? No. So, Jordan, knowing that you're in the market for a new Lappy, and maybe this guy is still within the return window and a restocking fee, what would you suggest, brother? Um, for just raw gaming, for, like, the... Probably like the the laptop I would go with if I were gonna in the market for a gaming laptop would be one of the uh, Dell XPSs because those are pretty nice. But hardware. you had some issues with the Dell options, though, didn't you? Uh yeah. With well, the I mean, yeah. If, if if you go if you go for the cheap Dell, then um you don't get the uh you don't get the Intel wireless card. You get a Broadcom one, which apparently sort of kind of works these days on the newer kernel. 
I still like going with the NVIDIA Wi-Fi just because I know for a fact that it works. I'm actually personally looking at either getting the XPS 13 or the uh, ThinkPad X1 Carbon. They're, I know they have a new model coming out, the Skylakes. So I'm going to be checking that out. Um, but yeah, no, as, as, as for your original question, do not fuck with external GPUs if you want to game. If you just need extra monitors, great. More power to you. No gaming. Orex, Sorry, dude. Just get a Dale. And on that bombshell, let's cue the music. You can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time, where you can pick up this nightmare fuel. I'm Vin Stone, cleverly disguised on the Twitter nets at Vin Stone, plus Vin Stone on the G+. Pluses. I'm Jordan Swung, and you can find me smelling kind of funny at The Burning Fool on Twitter or smelling minty fresh on plus Jordan Swung on Google+. Plus. There we go. Oh, hey, Jordan you. almost forgot his name, kind of like he just uh, claimed there was an NVIDIA Wi-Fi card. In any case, I'm Peter Mathuj. You can find me at Unaccounted For on Twitter or plus Peter Mathuj on Google+. Plus. And just remember, and to- uh, at the end of the day, beautiful party people, the Xeno horse is real. Xeno horse is live. I want to believe. Aliens. Fuck you, Mulder. Aliens. Woo 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 woo. <laughs> Five dudes. <laughs>